Hi everyone, in today's video I'm just going to make a small introduction on what will be my next um, video or videos about. Um, so I had a couple of users who have asked me how can I configure my Synology NAS as a mail server and also how should I configure the firewall. So I'm going to make those videos for um, everyone and how to explain how to do everything so you can have your own mail infrastructure. Of course, this is more for uh, home users, which are having the usual problems that we will talk about. Um, so in the future videos, I'm going to configure step by step the uh, systems to transform the NAS as a mail server. And I will also show you guys what are the important things that we ha you have to configure and we will do all this together like a hands-on um, lab. But unfortunately, I only have a production environment. I don't have a pure lab environment, so I cannot show you the install phases of the mail of the uh, mail plus packages. Um, so we will have a simpler but full working uh, kind of lab uh, configuration. So you can see what is important um, to configure. And this is intended specifically to home users, which are confronted to the usual difficulties of the mail world that we will see after. So of course it will be done this time. It will be done without Sophos because I think that most of you guys don't have, you know, this Sophos UTM at home for security. So I will not use it. I will just use it for um, the, the creation and the configuration of the NAT rules. So what, what are the usual challenges that you will face as a home user to have your own mail server? So usually ISPs are sometimes, you know, they are blocking the SMTP uh, 25 port. This is usually reserved for um, mail server to mail server communication. Also, you will have a, uh, as a home user, a dynamic IP address which does not work well when we, you talk about a mail infrastructure. Home users don't have access to the reverse DNS zone because this usually um, is, uh, you know, it's the ISP who owns it. And even if you are able to configure your system, you know, correctly, your email will either never go through, so it will never reach your destination, or it will go to the recipient um, spam folder. So you're going to have some mail deliverability issues and we don't want that. We don't want that. And sometimes what you can, um, you can correct all this by having some special ISP, you know, subscriptions that may be needed, like, you know, um, have a fixed IP and have a reverse DNS entry. So it's more expenses. And I think that for a home user for like two or three addresses, you don't want to have to pay, uh, you know, um, more money uh, just for that, which is understandable. So this is done to protect the world for, from spammers because it's, it can be easily, you know, used as an open relay, you know, if it's misconfigured. And of course, you know, they would like to sell you their products, you know, have a fixed IP, have, uh, a reverse DNS zone, for example, etc., etc. So, what will be the prerequisites for this infrastructure? So, we will need to have a dynamic DNS fully qualified domain name. We need to have a subscription with a provider for domain hosting, mail hosting with at least one mailbox for the relay purpose, and also DNS hosting and S is missing here, to add DNS entries. This is extremely important. And of course, you will have to have access to your home router so you can create the NAT rules. And of course, we have also a Let's, let's, a let's Encrypt certificate. So what will we work on in the following videos? In the next video, it's going to be, you know, all the basic stuff. So we're going to create a dynamic DNS a domain or FQDN through the NAS um, DSM web interface. We're going to have a, a con create um, and assign a Let's Encrypt certificate for the mail services. 
Well, we are going to configure the, the ports uh, to assign the ports for the mail server package. We are going to, co to safely configure the Synology firewall. We'll create the NAT rule, have the basic DNS entries configuration, basic mail plus server configuration, and some best practices. Of course, I'm not a, a mail plus server specialist, so you can have a lot of uh, a lot of you know special parameters i understand most of them i have read a bit of the uh, mail plus server admin guide which you could also give a look it's well explained um how we will send the email so this will be done through the um, relay configuration that i will of course explain when we are going to work on it and we're going to work also on how to receive emails so there there are two ways to receive your email there is either pop3 retrieval as i already you know have talked about and you can also receive them by accepting direct smtp uh, traffic on the port 25 if your isp is not blocking income the incoming tcp 25 port and also we will talk about the advanced dns entries so you can have a better mail reputation and, deliv and delivery and anti-spoofing protection. For the full detail on this specific topic, you can um, see the, num the video number 22 for more details. So we're gonna talk about, um, not really talk about, but more configure SPF, DKIM and DMARC. And maybe I will try to make an Outlook configuration. So this is everything that I would like to show you guys uh, by you know hands-on experience how to configure all that so i hope that you will bear with me you know with everything that will happen um, and maybe i will be able to do all that maybe not but this is my intention to you guys because this is what i have done at home um, i forgot to mention here that also probably i will talk about um, some kind of redundancy um, so this i will also talk about this this subject and now to finish what will be the architecture of course i cannot show you the um configure with you um the all the system if you don't know uh what it looks like okay so we will have uh, our domain and dns uh, that will be hosted at the uh, ovh provider Okay, so this is just the domain creation uh, and the, uh, the basic and advanced uh, DNS records. So there will be, you know, uh, uh, MX records, for example, and text records for SPF, DKIM, and DMARC, for example. Um, we will have also the uh, OV OVH as a mail provider because we need we need this provider to relay our email so it will be some kind of a smart host um, and we have also other mail servers and your own devices so in terms of, of network flows we will have for example the NAS that can retrieve the email through pop3 retrieval okay you can also receive the email by with the uh, other mail servers that will connect on the port 25 um, of your device. So this is everything linked to how to receive an email. Then how to send an email. So we will use, um, for example, the Outlook client that will connect to the NAS through the um, SMTPS port 587, which is dedicated to, uh, you know, for client to server um, communication and then you can see here that the NAS will um, create a um, connection an SMTPS connection with the 587 port to the OVH mail relay or smart host so it will be you know considered as a client so that's why you can bypass uh, the uh, ISP blocking the uh, TCP 25 port and then what do we have? So we have here the IMAP S port. So you will be able to synchronize your email with your device. And then we have, of course, the uh, mail plus package. Um, so you can have, you know, the, the web uh, interface to access your email. So we'll try to talk about everything, how to configure. 
and as you can see here we will have the UTM that will be used for the NAT only and the NAS that will be used um, will use the firewall of the NAS to protect it well so that's it I guess it's all for this video and I will try to show you guys how to configure everything also if you like maybe that I make those videos faster well just give it this video a thumbs up please <laughs> bye bye see you next time